Question four is a big pH question, pretty much testing everything on acids and bases and buffers. And so we're going to start off by calculating the pH of two different acids. And we need to explain why the pHs are different, even though their um, concentrations are the same. Um, HCl is a strong acid. And HClO, we can tell from the pKa that's being given, that's obviously a weak acid. So there's a bit of a clue there in the question. So how have I um, done this one? I'm saying HCl is a strong acid. That means it's fully dissociated. HClO is a weak acid, so partially dissociated. And then I've got a couple of equations there to show that. So HCl, single arrow into its ions. HClO reversible arrows into its ions. So even though the concentration of the acids are the same, the H plus concentrations will be different. The H plus in HCl will be higher than the H plus concentration in HClO. And there's the calculations. So the HCl one straightforward strong acid pH. So that's just minus log the H plus concentration. So we know that, so therefore we know that. So minus log 0.14, and the two decimal places we get 0.85. HClO is a bit different. We were given the pKa, so you can see I've calculated Ka there. That's 10 to the minus um, pKa, so it comes out at 3.7 times 10 to the minus 8. To calculate the H plus concentration of a weak acid, it's the square root of Ka times the concentration of the acid. So we know both of those terms now. So we get an H plus concentration of 7.2 times 10 to the minus 5, which gives us a pH of 4.14. The um, two equations. So you can see I've written up in very simple terms. Acid plus metal gives salt and hydrogen. And so the full equation would be this one here. This salt is made from aluminium 3 plus ions. These have one minus charges, so we need three of those. And it so balances like that. The ionic equation, I'll just explain the, the solution for that one. We've got to turn things into ions if we can. Well, aluminium, the metal, can't do that into ions. The acid we can, so we've got three ethanoate ions and three H plus ions. The salt we can, you can see the ions there. Hydrogen we can't. And then we just cancel out like terms and we're left with that. pH of a strong base now, so the sodium hydroxide will fully dissociate into its ions. That means the concentration of hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, will be the same as the concentration of hydroxide ions. We're going to bring Kw in. You can use the POH method, but I prefer this one. So Kw equals the concentration of the H plus ion multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide ions. Rearrange for H plus, so we can minus log the answer. So that's 1 times 10 to the minus 14 Kw divided by the OH minus concentration, that 0.4. So we get a, an H plus concentration of that. Minus log, 13.6. So we've got to talk about how buffers based on methanoic acid work. So explain what is meant by the term buffer. So that'll be your definition. And describe how buffers based on methanoic acid act as a buffer. So because they've specified a particular chemical, we must talk about this in our answer. And when I marked questions on this from my students, they just gave me just generic uh, buffer solutions answer. So it must be directly linked to methanoic acid. So how do buffers work? Or what is a buffer, sorry? Buffer solutions, they minimize changes in pH or small changes in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. So a buffer based on methanoic acid is made when the weak acid, so that's the HCOH, and its conjugate base, that's the HCOO minus ion, they're both present. 
So get an equation in, because we're going to talk about that. So when small amounts of alkali or base are added, so that's going to react with the H plus concentration. It's going to drop the H plus concentration. And so the buffer responds by this um, weak acid, methanoic acid, dissociating a little bit more to send some H plus ions back. So I've written that. When small amounts of, of base are added, the concentration of H plus is lowered. That means that the um, HCOH will dissociate more and the equilibrium shifts to the right to replace them. And the opposite of that, when small amounts of acid are added, that's going to increase the H plus concentration. So that means that this, this stock of, of methanoate ions can react with those and send the equilibrium over to the left and restore the pH. Small amounts of acid are added. The concentration of H plus increases. They react with the HCO minus ion and shift the equilibrium to the left. And then the final part of this question is a calculation. Chemist prepares a buffer by mixing together. So we've got a volume and a concentration of methanoic acid, given the Ka, volume, concentration of sodium hydroxide. Again, they've been quite nice. The total volume adds up to one decimeter cube. That'll come in handy. Explain why a buffer is formed when these two solutions are mixed. Calculate the pH of the buffer to two decimal places. Okay, so there's the equation, the reaction that's taking place. So you can see here, I've calculated the moles of these two chemicals. And you can see that the moles of acid um, exceed the moles of sodium hydroxide. So the weak acid is only partially neutralized. So all of these moles of alkali will go, but there'll be some of this left which means that at the end of the reaction, you're going to have some of this left and you're going to have some of this and therefore you've got the ingredients for your buffer. So there's my treatment of those numbers. So we've got 0 0.64, 0 0.4, 0 0.0. This is a bit like the ice method. So these are the initial moles. After the reaction, you'll have 0.24 of that left We'll have got none of that, but we've got 0 0.4 of this and 0 0.4 of that. That's not relevant. So we're going to base our H plus calculation or our um, pH calculation on these values. Remember the volume's one. So these moles here are effectively the concentrations. So the H plus of a buffer is I've got this silly way of remembering it, casted over salt. If, you remember, if you've seen the video, you'll know what I'm talking about there. So Ka times the acid concentration over the salt concentration. So we've got all these numbers now. We just stick them into this expression and we get an H plus concentration of that. We minus log that and we get to two decimal places. The buffer pH is 3.99.